James Franco is in talks to maybe direct ESPN the movie. And it's an adaptation of the book, Those Guys Have All the Fun, from the author Jim Miller. And uh, the book chronicles the beginnings of the network and would center on Bill Rasmussen and his son, Scott. They're the ones that created this 24-hour cable network, and they did so in Connecticut. And they looked at it and said, we can do it in Connecticut. The land's cheap there in Bristol, Connecticut. And uh, they launched ESPN. So the movie's been in the works for a while. In fact, uh, the author of Those Guys Have All the Fun, Jim Miller, told us um, back in 2015, the movie would be like other popular corporation business biographical films like The Social Network or Moneyball. No word yet on casting, including if Franco would play a role, but the movie will be an ensemble flick with other figureheads from the network's early days being depicted. And this makes the most sense because if you want to, you show the beginning of The Social Network and Facebook, you know, how it started, um, you know, who was involved behind the scenes, the drama behind the scenes. And I think with ESPN and starting it, how you started it, why you started it, where you started it, uh, those involved, trying to get people to come in. Uh, we used to be in trailers. You know, we, we had one building there, but we had a trailer that we would get dressed in, in the early uh, you know beginnings, humble beginnings of ESPN. But just I think the struggle there is what people can relate to. Uh, when you were told that you shouldn't do it, uh, you can't do it. Uh, some of the talent going there, you know, still Chris Berman and Tom Meese and Bob Lee, I would think would play a, a large role. So I don't even know if it would get to when I got there in the uh, late 80s. It might be more of just about the building of ESPN. Yeah, Seaton. I feel like that's actually the end scene of the movie is you and Keith signing on saying, welcome to the big show. And then it's sort of like uh, the rest is history. Mm. So you'd be in it for about eight seconds. Okay. Yeah. But an important eight it's seconds. It's a big eight seconds, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah, Paul. I think the one seed to play you is Jason Bateman. I don't even think it's close. I think his delivery, because you were the more measured delivery. How old is Jason Bateman, though? He, he's probably, I would guess, 47, 48 years old. Because you'd have to get somebody probably in their mid-30s, late 30s, at the, at the time when ESPN kind of blew up. You open for, like, a Hemsworth brother? Yeah, I'm fine with one of those guys. Fine with the, you know, one of the, they all, I don't know that, I can't tell them apart. Yes. Uh, no, so you're saying Ryan Gosling would be too old for you? He might be too good looking, let's be honest. You know, you don't want to get somebody where they go, are you kidding me? Okay, Chris Pine? Yeah, yeah, Chris Pine. Chris Pine would be great. He's really funny. He's really Yeah. Ryan Reynolds, I think, you know, I think he could do it. He's got a good sense of humor. Who's playing Berman? Oh. Affleck? You could put on a couple pounds. <laughs> yes, McLovin. I, I think you're being overly <laughs> humble. The Bill Rass, I read the book. I loved it. Yeah. But the Bill Rasmussen part was, to me, the least interesting. It, it's the same with me. It's drier. I mean, like, people want to know the name. You want to, you want to, we grew up, we want to talk about the, and hear stories about the people we know, the way they, they accidentally were filming a lacrosse game and something happened. Like, that's great backstory. I mean, not to dis diminish it yeah but, but what are you going to get like it, let's, yeah well like sports night i mean they there's obviously something there that sports night was trying to get at yeah but they were nowhere near they didn't they didn't come close to capturing what espn was at the time um but i don't know like don't you have to have a bad guy a villain a nemesis something in this movie you know social network had that you know you, you were choosing sides here of you know what side do you lean on here with how they came up with this? Or did you steal the idea? You know, the uh, Winklevoss twins and, you know, how they didn't get credit like they should have. You know, the uh, Andrew Garfield character. Now, he did get a billion, so he got sort of credited. Yeah, Pauline. I think the only thing that makes sense, though, is the infighting with management and Keith Oberman as the conflict that almost changed the direction of ESPN. He left when you guys were at your peak of popularity and it didn't hurt ESPN. You guys kept growing and getting bigger. You stayed. Yeah. So it, it, he he does. He's not the bad guy, Keith Oberman, but he's the conflict guy, according to you and according to everybody. Just from a, the truth of the story, and he left. Well, Keith Oberman was huge. You two together. Yeah, but I think that people still would be interested in how you're building something. Like Moneyball was was a, about this was our philosophy to build a team in uh, you know, a, a market that wasn't 
rich with dollars supporting this team. And therefore, you had to be creative in how you built this team. But it helped having Brad Pitt in there. Uh, you know, Jonah Hill was very... So you had to have great characters in there. So you were interested in what they were telling you about. And Brad Pitt playing Billy Bean, you know, people were interested in that. You know, see. Yeah, I mean, right. I think that the story is probably more important than the characters themselves, you know, which is the the names. Like, you sort of, you invest in the characters whether you knew who they were pre going in or not, right? I'm just, I, I don't know how you would capture that like what are you trying to capture what is the essence of hey people are going to watch a movie on espn because it's about this and that's what i've always been curious about you know can you get drama in there you know what what's going on behind the scenes that they're going to be able to tell you about yes mclovin i th i can already imagine the season there's some well-worn territory like oh we got to find a satellite dish to get this on and that then there's a scene when they realize that the ratings are high i see it feel like we've seen some of that before uh, you know, stories about networks growing up. It's very cool, and I'm sure that's what it's going to be. You know, doesn't that sound familiar territory in movies? This one feels like this is, you know, you can build upon this because you're showing what it, what it wasn't. We know what it is. This is what it wasn't at the time and how it became, you know, this dynasty here. Yeah, Paul. Paul Giamatti as Howie Schwab. There you go. I don't know if he'll do it. It's, Paul Giamatti's pretty big time. Mm-hmm. A cameo? I don't know if Howie Schwab is making the movie. Damn it. Who's playing Berman? Because I think you got to start there, that that Chris is the, the central figure. Like Seth uh, Rogen? Ooh. Whatever that guy. He's kind of got the gravelly voice anyway with the laugh. He, he, way, way. <laughs> He's it, in the James Franco stable oh, of friends. Oh, okay. Jonah Hill? Is Jonah Hill yeah. going to play like Bob Lee? He's General? skinny now. Yeah. Yes, McLove. Is there one executive that you think is movie worthy? Is there like um, a one president that stands <laughs> yes. out? Yes, there, well, actually, there, there are a couple of them. <laughs> there are a couple of them. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. No, no, no. Yeah. I, look, I, I, I told everybody I, I had a, a cleansing, a purge. I'm good. I'm good on ESPN. I'm fine. I was actually thinking earlier on, maybe like an early president, Steve Bornstein. Bornstein gave me, yeah. Oh yeah. He then he started the NFL Network, but Bornstein, the famous quote. You're just bleeping talent when he was trying to re-sign me. Uh, Mark Shapiro. Good God. You could, you could do a movie on Mark Shapiro when he ran the company. He didn't have a desk. He had a podium, and he would stand with a baseball bat. <laughs> I, what you, you know, it's not like you walk in for a friendly chat. He's got a baseball bat. Who else? Uh, you have uh, one of my bosses, John Walsh, an albino. Uh, you know, integral. Uh, you know, very, uh, I mean, you could just do the one story about John Walsh when he first got to Bristol, Connecticut. He's, he's staying at the Radisson Inn, and Mike McQuaid has to go pick up John Walsh because he doesn't drive. He's an albino, and he's got to pick him up and bring him over to ESPN. So this is first day, management. And Mike McQuaid goes over, and there's an albino convention going on at the Radisson because everybody said, Mike McQuay goes, who is this guy? How am I going to know him? They're like, he's got white hair. He's an albino. You can't miss him. He goes into the lobby and it's like, you know, 40 albinos are in the lobby. So he's trying to pick out John Walsh from the group. You can't make that up. Yeah, Paulie. Craig Kilborn could play Kilborn. Craig Kilborn. Kilborn. Yeah. Have Kilborn play himself. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, I don't know what Kilby's doing now, but yeah, I think you get Kilby to uh, play Kilby. Carl Ravage could still play Carl Ravage. Linda Cohn could still play Linda Cohn. I would prefer to have somebody play me. I don't want to play myself. Jason Bateman would be good. I'd, I'd sign off on Jason Bateman. Not that they're waiting for me to sign off on something. but Yeah, we got to get Paul Giamatti in the movie. Yes, McLovin. Andrew Garfield. He, uh, for who? For you. No, he's too small. A former Spider Man guy? Yeah, he's little. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm a massive guy. I'm Jack. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.